Well, I'm so thrilled to have Dr. Carmen Keith here uh, with me. So Dr. Keith, you own a clinic in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Tell me about that. Yes, thanks Barbie. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, so yes, I own a functional medicine wellness clinic in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Um, I am triple board certified. I am a Harvard trained uh, doctor. I'm an anesthesiologist, a pain management physician, and a, a functional medicine doctor. I'm one of a thousand in the world who actually have the uh, functional medicine certi certification. So um, about two years ago, it was exactly that I left the system of the hospital after uh, being in it for uh, seven, nine years. And I decided that it was time to do something different, of course, with, with the Lord's guidance. Yeah, and to be your own boss, if you will. Absolutely, yes. And so now, instead of reaching for the pharmaceuticals, I'm an integrative wellness doctor. And so I'm able to help people get to the root of their problem and help them tailor um, what their body needs to help it heal. You know, I mean, Barbie, when we give the body what it, what it needs to heal, it will heal itself, right? right. Yeah, so I'm so interested to hear this because you were introduced to this company, ASEA, with redox signaling molecules. Now, had you as a physician, have you ever heard of redox signaling molecules before? Is this something that you studied? Tell me about this. Sure, yeah, so redox biochemistry is taught um, and, and, it's not, and it's tested on, but it's not necessarily applied in, um, in medicine, if you will. Like I didn't know that some chemotherapeutic drugs actually work off of redox biochemistry. And that's really, that is absolutely true. Um, but we all have learned it. It's just, did we recognize it as redox biochemistry? Um, I explain it to people simply, you know, those are big fancy words, but if, you, if you've ever seen um, a flower bloom, well, the sun's energy was turned into a bloom, right? Um, grass growing. Um, it's the same principles that make gas make your car go down the road. It's redox principles. Mm -hmm. And when we apply that into the body, um, it's, it's fabulous. And so um, the answer is I had, but um, it's just because I did a lot of science studying um, through my career. Yeah, and so then you start hearing about redox signaling molecules and about the same time, your dad was dealing mm -hmm. with a major health challenge. Tell me um, about that and, and, and your choice to actually give your own father this. Yeah, absolutely. So I was introduced to um, ASEA in April and I did what every good doctor does. I um, ignored my colleague, actually, it was a fellow doctor that gave me um, a heads up on ASEA, Dr. Ann Ools, in fact. And we laugh about it now, but it was not funny that I ignored her. But I did my research, and what kind of tipped me over during that was the consistency of what I kept finding, along with the consistency of listening to the ASEA um, corporate team and the scientists there. Well, I started taking it, and I was taking it, um, and you know, I, I felt that my sleep was better and my brain fog improved, okay? Well, my dad had been sick. That was in um, May that I started taking it. My dad had been ill since February the 20th. And not too long after I started taking it, I gave it to my mother because she was his caregiver. She was living at the hospital. And um, a couple of weeks after that, this brings us to late May, um, mom calls and says, well, um, they, they say that they can't do anything else with dad. Now, dad had been struggling for that length of time. So literally from February 20th until June um, in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Had been given a 10% chance of living, 10%. And I don't believe in accidents. And mom goes, Carmen, what are we gonna do? And I said, mom, this is, this is good. This is when I get to start. And she goes, what are we gonna do, that blue bottle? And I said, yeah, we are. Because you see, by the time that had come around, I had already ran this through my pharmacist friend's brain and she's like, I can't believe it. It doesn't interact with anything, no diseases, no pharmaceuticals. She's like, uh, I am more comfortable with you giving this than many of the drugs that I've seen you write. Wow. 
So I simply told mom, let's get it in his mouth. Let me paint the picture for you. Dad was, um, he had a feeding tube in his nose. He did not know us. He had not eaten in five weeks and he was basically just existing in this hospital room. Um, I said, mom, put it on a sponge like you put water in his mouth and put the ASEA on it and put it in his mouth. Um, and so she started doing it. In about a week, he got his feeding tube out and he started eating full meals. Again, he hadn't done that in five weeks. The doctors couldn't believe that he kept a full meal down without getting sick. Um, and at that time, then I said, okay, mom, keep, keep increasing his volume and keep doing the gel because I recognized that the gel was twice as powerful as the liquid. So in someone who can't drink, the gel is great. Yes. Putting it on his carotids, we started putting on his belly, we started putting on his spine. Um, and so a week after that, he got out of his chair and he walked 250 feet unassisted, okay? This qualified him for inpatient rehab. And two days prior to that, he was told he would never make it to rehab and he had to go to a nursing home for, for three months. And so he qualified for inpatient rehab and he walked out of there on July the 3rd and came home. Now, we all hear about the story of ASEA and we all hear that, you know, Mr. Norton, that he gave 43 people and of those seven people were on hospice and of those six are alive today. Well, I'm telling you, my story is my dad. My dad is added to those numbers. And so ASEA, uh, provided a healing avenue for my dad and my family that we never would have had. And so understand, you know, Barbie, ASEA came into my life for me. ASEA is in my life for everybody else that I'm able to help with it. And number one was my dad, my dad. And um, he's doing great. Um, he's able to drive again. Um, the doctors actually call him the miracle man. And this is at a major tertiary care center, like where the guys wrote the textbooks, okay? Um, but have I told them what we chose to do? Absolutely not. There's no need in that. You know, it's thank you for taking care of my dad. We've got him home now and on down the road we go, <laughs> right? So yeah. yeah, it's been incredible. And it's probably because, I mean, because going back to what you literally said just a few minutes ago, um, you studied it, but not uh, in this particular form. So if we're waiting on our doctor to tell us about redox signaling molecules, are you saying that's probably not going to happen? Oh, absolutely, Barbie. So I'll tell it to you like this, okay? If you're waiting for your doctor to tell you about a CEO redox, you're going to be dead before they do. Just look at the pattern of medicine. You know, it takes 40 years for something to come mainstream. And so, you know, add 40 years to whatever age you are, understanding the average, um, the average amount of time we live in this country is 79.4 years. So if you're older than that, when you add, add 40, you're never going to hear about it. Okay. And so that's the beauty of what um, the Nortons have done with this. They have put this into our hands to help those that our system can't help, right? Um, think about stem cells, you know, stem cells, remember Dolly the sheep, that was in the 80s. Yeah. It seems like yesterday, but even that's not mainstream. Even that is still highly, highly debatable topics in medicine. So um, this, this has the potential to change the landscape of the healthcare system as we know it, wow. period, end of story, because it's native to the body. And there is, uh, there's nothing else like it, nothing else like it. And so based on, I mean, you're a Harvard Medical School trained doctor, triple board certified, you obviously saw the benefit in joining this company, even with all the training and all the certifications that you have. And, and I'm assuming that's because with your patients, you want to help them in any way possibly that you can. And for some patients, pharmaceuticals may not work, um, mm -hmm. but this will not hurt you. Redox right. will not hurt you. That's right. And yeah, so I look for anything that could help one person, right? Um, but I have such a heart for this because it helps someone so close to me. And that really helped me to go, you know what? This can help many more people that I have in my clinic 
who aren't as severe as my dad, my dad is. Remember, when you are up against the wall, right? When you're when you're in those moments of desperation, um, something falls into your life. It's your choice to use it and it's your choice not to. And so um, I just applied principles my dad taught me, which is, you know, if the door opens, you better go in and look around, right? It's safe. Um, it won't harm you. Will it help you? Can't hurt you. Mm -hmm. yeah, right? And you have to think about, you know, what are your expectations when, when, you, when you start a SIA? And I set these with my patients. You know, I have no problems um, helping patients to understand that this, this is a great avenue to get you down the road. Um, and I have no, no, no problems giving it to my patients at all. But with that and with anything comes expectations. So what are your expectations of this? If you expect that an ailment you've had for 50 years is just going to go away by drinking one 32 ounce bottle of this, I'm sorry, but that's not a realistic expectation. No. You are expecting to, uh, to not feel a little worse before you get better. Well, I'm sorry, but that's not realistic because of how the body works. You are in a sick, toxic state. And for that to get better, you have to sweep out the, the floors. And when you sweep out, the, the dust is gonna fly up. You're gonna inhale it, you're gonna cough. You're probably gonna get a little uh, nose runny, sinus issues. But you know what? It's gonna go away when the dust settles, right? And so that's what the SIA. And so we have to recognize what our expectations are of it. Um, and then also expectations of the company, expectations of each other. Um, and I tell people, you know, hey, maybe ASEA is not in your life to give you that home run of a health um, improvement story. It, it will improve you to what extent will remain because it depends on you. Are you going to stop in the seventh of eighth lap of eight laps? Are you going to stop when, you're, when your miracle is just around the corner, right? Maybe ASEA is there to be your, your family, you know? It is finally the group of people of like-mindedness that you feel like you belong to. And maybe ASEA is in your life for you to become the human that you are to become on this earth so that you can help the next person. If you think ASEA is in your life just for you, oh man, your heart, that's just, that's being so selfish. It's, it's for everybody that's going to come into contact with you and, and to not share the message. Um, it, it, I feel like we have a, an ethical and a moral obligation to share this message. And no matter what role we are, I happen to be a doctor, but you have to be a doctor to do this. You don't have to be a doctor to understand. I have a choice in my health and I choose this for right now. Well, and that's the last thing that, that I'll mention to you, Carmen, before I let you go is if you don't tell somebody about a SIA redox, somebody else will suffer. Is that kind of how, how you see this? That if you're not telling other people about this, whether as a non-physician or as a physician in your everyday workplace, somebody down the line will suffer. Right, and that's true. And so it's just up to you to be the messenger. You know, we're messengers of all sorts of things. We're messengers of good movies, of a good restaurant in town, of a good doctor. You know, we all talk, it's all word of mouth. And so why not open your mouth and say, you know what, this has helped me in so many ways. You know, what I will advise people not to do is not to go to their doctors and, for lack of a better term, throw up on them because you're not going to single handedly. Um, get your doctor to change the way that they practice. It's not going to happen because of the system that they're in. But for someone like me who has decided to unplug for, from the system traditionally, um, we are the ones who have capability to reach those in the, in the health um, seeking industry there. So just, uh, you know, go to your doctor, get your good results and say thanks. And, and hopefully they'll say, keep doing what you're doing. See you, see you next year. Yeah. Great. Great. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Carmen Keith, for uh, spending a little bit of time with me uh, with this short interview. Oh, you're welcome, Barbie. My pleasure. <laughs>